Hi guys, good morning. So next topic we are going to discuss is about the biology of a tooth movement. So starting with the histology part of the tooth movement, see when you apply an, any orthodontic force onto the tooth, it will bring about the two changes. When you want to move the tooth in this direction, when you apply an orthodontic force, you want to move the tooth in this direction. So there is a formation of two areas, the pressure side and the tension side. Right? So the area of the pressure side direction on which the tooth has to be moved. Right? While the area of the tension side is the opposite side to that of the pressure side. So the pressure side and the tension side they are having a electrostatic charge. Right? So the pressure side they exhibit the negative charge while the tension side they exhibit the positive charge fine so the pressure side this one the pressure side in this when the bone it is subjected to the pressure side it reacts by bone resorption while on the tension side there will be bone deposition fine i am repeating it again see when you apply the orthodontic force it will bring about the orthodontic tooth movement see so it results in the formation of the area of the pressure side and opposite to the pressure side there will be the area of tension Right, so the area of the pressure side, this side, they exhibit the negative charge. Area on the pressure side, they exhibit the positive charge. So there will be bone resorption on the pressure side, while there will be bone deposition on the tension side. Right. So the important point is, when a tooth is moved due to the application of orthodontic force, there will be bone resorption on the pressure side there will be bone deposition on the tension side important fine so your whole concept of the orthodontic tooth movement it is based on the bone resorption and bone deposition now next is very important point for your exam point of view the optimum orthodontic force it is equivalent to your capillary pulse pressure that is 20 to 26 gram per centimeter square fine and your orthodontic force it should not exceed the cbp that is the capillary blood pressure commonly asked mcq so your orthodontic force should be 20 to 26 gram per centimeter square and it should not exceed the capillary blood pressure now after this next is the resorption so in this we have two types of resorption the frontal resorption and the undermining resorption so what are all the difference between the frontal and the undermining resorption please understand it carefully see the frontal resorption is when you apply an orthodontic force within its physiologic limits physiologic limits or when you apply a low force onto the tooth it will lead to frontal resorption it means the low force leads to frontal resorption so when you apply a low force or when you apply a low orthodontic force and the force within its physiologic limits it will cause the frontal resorption fine and undermining resorption is when you apply the extreme or the high forces onto the tooth it will result in the crushing or the total compression of the periodontal ligament which leads to the occlusion of the blood vessels or your blood vessels get occluded fine that will result in the formation of hyalinization or the hyalinized zone so what is the hyalinized zone it is a sterile zone it is a sterile zone and when there is an hyalinized 
hyalinization or when the hyalinized zone is formed this will lead to undermining resorption why because the formation of the hyalinized zone will leads to stoppage of the orthodontic tooth movement fine light forces will lead to the or the low forces will lead to the frontal resorption heavy or the extreme forces will lead to the occlusion of the blood vessels which results in the hyalinization and therefore it leads to the undermining resorption and in the undermining resorption in the hyalinization your orthodontic tooth movement is stopped fine now after this coming on to the hyalinization that what is hyalinization see the hyalinization it is the form of the tissue degeneration which is characterized by the formation of a clear eosinophilic homogeneous substance fine so the presence of the hyalinized zone it indicates that the ligament is non functional if the ligament is non functional then the bone resorption will not occur very important point the hyalinization it is a sterile zone when there is an hyalinized zone in this the ligament it act as non functional and in this the bone resorption will not occur when there is no bone resorption hence the tooth will not move not move fine so when you remove this hyalinized zone then it will lead to the tooth movement now the elimination of the hyalinized zone it can be occur by two mechanism you can remove the hyalinized zone by two mechanism removal of hyalinized zone number 1 first mechanism is by the resorption of alveolar bone by the osteoclast and second mechanism is by the invasion of the cells and the blood vessels from the periphery of the compressed zone by which the necrotic tissue is removed right so just remember two points the low forces will cause the frontal resorption heavy forces will cause the occlusion of the blood vessel which leads to the hyalinization and hyalinization it will not cause it or it will not progress the further tooth movement so when you so when you will remove the hyalinized zone then only you will get the orthodontic tooth movement fine so this is the basic difference and these are the two mechanism for the removal of the hyalinized zone so after this next are the phases of the tooth movement so in this we have three phases see in this we have three phases first is the initial phase so the initial phase is of in this there is very rapid tooth movement occurs fine at but at certain point it get stop so the tooth movement in the initial phase it is between 0.4 to 0.9 mm and it is usually occur in a weak time fine this is what we called as initial phase second phase is the lag phase so lag phase is the one in which your tooth movement has stopped this is your lag phase in which your tooth movement has stopped why because of the presence of hyalinized zone fine and this will cause the undermining resorption third is your post lag phase and yes your lag phase it is usually extend to 2 to 3 weeks and in the post lag phase when you remove the uh, hyalinized zone or when you remove the hyalinized part then the bone undergoes the resorption then there is an increase in the 
tooth movement and this is called as frontal resorption. So this is the initial phase and right, in which there is a rapid tooth movement. This is the lag phase in which there is an undermining resorption due to the presence of the hyaline zone and this is a post lag phase in which there is a frontal resorption when the hyaline zone is removed there is an osteoclastic activity which leads to the rapid tooth movement right so this is all about the phases of tooth movement it is 0 0.4 to 0 0.9 mm lag phase is usually extend for 2 to 3 weeks right now you have to remember two important points regarding your mcq c number one when you apply the low force then your orthodontic tooth movement otm is orthodontic tooth movement it will occur after the two days when you apply heavy forces your orthodontic tooth movement it will start after 7 to 14 days after the hyalinized area or after the removal of the hyalinized zone fine so your when you apply the low force your orthodontic tooth movement it will occur after two days when you apply the high force your orthodontic tooth movement it will start after 7 to 14 days or it will start at 7 to 14 days after the removal of the hyalinized zone fine now last are the theories of the tooth movement so in this we have three theories pressure tension blood flow and the bone bend or the bone bending piezoelectric theory so in this we'll discuss it number one is the pressure tension theory it was given by Schwartz so according to Schwartz when you apply the orthodontic force onto the tooth it will lead to the area of pressure side and on the other side area of tension side so the it is electrostatically charged so the area of pressure side it is negatively charged area of tension side it is positively charged and so the area which is under pressure it leads to the bone resorption area which is under tension it will lead to bone deposition fine second is the fluid dynamic theory fluid dynamic theory it was given by beam so in this when you applied a force for a short duration such as during the mastication then the fluid then the this is the fluid then the fluid it is replenished as soon as the force is removed when the force is removed the interstitial fluid is replenished or will come back to its normal state fine but when you apply but when you apply the heavy forces when you apply the heavy forces so in this way the interstitial fluid it will squeeze out towards the apex and with the cervical margins with the apex and the cervical margin when you apply the high force or you, when you apply the heavy force the interstitial fluid in the periodontal space it will squeeze out right and this will call as squeeze film effect which was given by B right so when orthodontic force is applied it results in the compression of the we have already discussed compression of the periodontal ligament and it will in this the blood vessels of the periodontal ligament it will get trapped 
therefore it will lead to stenosis or in this there is the vessels about the stenosis which results in an aneurysm fine when you apply the low force the interstitial fluid it will replenish back when the force is removed for example during the mastication but when you apply the high forces the interstitial fluid it will get squeezed out from the apex and from the cervical margin and this is called a squeeze film effect and when you apply the high forces it will lead to the compression of the pdl and therefore the blood vessels of the periodontal ligament it will get trapped between the fibers and it will lead to the stenosis and finally there is a formation of the aneurysm last theory that is the piezoelectric theory it was given by ferrar in year 1876 so basically the piezoelectric theory it is a phenomena which is observed in a many crystalline material in which there is a deformation of the crystal structure which is produced by a flow of electric current so as a result of which there is a displacement of the electron from one part to the another part of the lattice or crystal lattice fine so the possible sources for the electric current are number 1 collagen so in the bone collagen it exist in a crystalline state only right second is the hydroxy epitite so it is also the crystalline in form and third one is the collagen hydroxy epitite interface right so this is all about the piezoelectric theory now after this last are some of the factors which increase or decrease which increase the rate of the tooth movement and the factors which decreases the rate of tooth movement so the factors which increases the rate of tooth movement these are the pth thyroxin the injection of the prostaglandins relaxin and the corticotomy which is also called as vilcodontics right so these are the factors which increase the rate of the tooth movement now coming on to the factors which decreases the rate of the tooth movement these are the nsaids you can use the cox 1 and cox 2 that are the selecoxib which do not cause any kind of inhibition on to the tooth movement right second are the bisphosphonate the drugs like the tetracycline the epileptic drug like the phenytoin alkaline phosphatase and the calcitonin so these are some of the drugs which causes the decrease in the rate of the tooth movement fine so guys this is all about the biology of the tooth movement please go through it once and try to make the notes thank you